Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for One Piece, Chapter 732. And before I get started with what happened in the chapter, I want to talk about something that I that I heard on the Insane Game Freaks review of the chapter of last week's chapter. Um, I didn't really put much thought into it, but I usually don't try to put too much thought into certain like devil fruit powers and stuff, but um, just because Oda usually just if I thought about whether every devil fruit thing made sense or not, like I would be questioning everything, like gear second, gear third, how, how can Luffy blow air into his thumbs and like you know stuff like that. And so I try not to think about devil fruit abilities too too much. But um, one thing that the insane game freak mentioned in his review got me thinking it's how sugar's power doesn't make any sense um usually how devil fruit abilities work is that they can do one thing and with that thing you can kind of use it in different ways but in but with sugar's ability she actually has two which doesn't make any sense one she can turn people into toys and two she can make people forget about the person she turned into a toy those are two completely different abilities I can, you know, we could, him and I, we can see how, you know, maybe the person she turns into into a toy, it loses its memories, but her devil fruit ability shouldn't affect everyone else as well. Right, so those are technically two different abilities, so it doesn't really make any sense. Right, but uh, I just thought I'd bring that up. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's. All I had to talk about about his review. Um, that's all I wanted to bring up before I get started with mine. But um, as far as this chapter goes, it's um, nothing involving Sabo, which I'm perfectly fine with. I don't really care. I I'm not the type to get. Ex I mean, if it was actually built up a little bit, then I would have cared enough to want to see him in this chapter. I really don't care enough. So yeah, um, he could keep. Sabo waiting for like weeks and weeks and weeks I wouldn't care <laughs> so <laughs> I mean I knew he was alive the entire time anyway so it's not like it's a big surprise to me but um yeah this chapter doesn't focus on him at all though I am kind of disappointed it didn't uh focus on Koala at all either but um uh, it's pretty much just building stuff up for uh the factory team you know Robin Frankie Usopp the dwarves the toys you know and um we get information about the Doflamingo family and how their like pecking order works, the hierarchy and everything. And um, we also just see how their plan starts. Um, they start going towards the factory in the dock and they have to go through that that tunnel that they made. But Frankie's too big, you know, uh, you know, they're, they're they're dwarves and toys. None of them are the size of big Frankie, especially post time skip Frankie. So he has to go, so in order to get to the factory, he has to go for the toy house. However, it's guarded. So he just decides to take advantage of that and just cause a ruckus in order to buy time for all the others. Right, which it does work because he attacks the toy house, but everybody who's hearing this, because there's a, a transponder snail, and like Pika, da, um, uh, Diamante, Doflamingo, Fujitora, all these guys are hearing what's going on. And they're under the assumption that it's the Straw Hats attacking. It's really just Frankie, so this so he is really buying time for them, um, which is stupid on the fodder guy's part. They're saying the, the fodder guy actually said the straw hats are attacking instead of one of the straw hats are attacking. You know he mentioned oh look it's cyborg Frankie, but he didn't you know he, for some reason whenever someone sees a straw hat they don't say oh my god look it's pirate hunter Zoro pirate hunter Zoro is attacking. They say it's the straw hats attacking. You know so that's kind of that kind of gives them the wrong idea, you know. So right now everyone's under the assumption the straw hats are the ones attacking. But um, yeah. So it should. So he is really buying them some time, and um, we learn that the Doflamingo family sent four of the executive staff guys over to guard the factory and the toy house, which is not news to us. I I don't, really, I don't even really know why we said why I said that we learned it. It's them that's learning it. The toys and the doors. You know, Soul and his crew, and Robin and Usopp. But you know, you know they're the ones that are learning it. Um, Senor Pink, he's already there. 
and uh, be, that guy is really freaking weird. All right, <laughs> that dude's really freaking weird. All right, I I can't. I, I don't even. I don't even want to talk about this guy. He's just so freaking weird. Him, Dellinger, it's. <laughs> Loud G, Loud G is probably the only normal guy in Diamante's group. You know, I. <laughs> well, Diamante is more normal than the rest of them, but still not really normal. Whatever. It's the point is, Senor Pink is really freaking weird. Right? He's really freaking weird, right? And Frankie ends up blowing him and all the fodder guys away with coup de vent. And. Uh, well, not really. He doesn't really end up blowing Senior Pink away because we see him, he has a devil fruit already. At least that's what I would assume, since he kind of hid inside the ground and then he came up out of the ground. But it's like he didn't he didn't really like go into the ground. Like imagine Obito, for example, he could phase through. No, he can't. Can he do that? No. Okay. So now that's a bad example. Um. Imagine, like, a ghost or something, like, going into the ground, right? That's not how his power works. It's like, um, like one of those ninja, ninja things where you hold it up and, like, it conceals your presence and you blend in with the surroundings. It looks like, it, it looks like he's hiding under one of those things. But, uh, it can't be true because he would, he would have still gotten blown away by a event. So, yeah, it's, it's an interesting power. You know, because the ground was actually rolled up like it was like a carpet or something like, you know, so he he has to have a devil fruit, right? So, uh, yeah, Senior Pink doesn't really get blown away like the girls and the fodder guys do. Also, the toy house kind of just came crashing down with that, which is no surprise. But um, that's really it. We That's all we really get from those, from Frankie and Senior Pink and that those people over there, <laughs> the rest of it is pretty much, um, we see a scene with Treble and Sugar, and everything else just Robin, Usopp, and Soul, and the, and the crew, alright, the crew, I'm not talking about the Stry crew, I mean like the, the toys and doors, um, the one scene we do see of Sugar and Treble though was kind of interesting because they hear the attack and they know the Straw Hats are attacking, but they aren't aware that, the Straw Hats are working together with the toys and doors. Okay, so they don't realize that the Straw Hats are actually after her as well. They don't realize that they actually know about her. Okay, so they're kind of at a disadvantage there when it comes to information. Um, then the rest of the chapter, like I said, is just Soul and everyone else. Um, they find out, like I said, about the executive staff guys going there. Senor Pink is one of them, obviously. Lao G and Dellinger are two others, obviously, because we learned about them. We saw, actually heard, uh, we saw Doflamingo giving Diamante the order to give Lao G the order to go, <laughs> to go to the toy house or the factory. And Dellinger we know because from the last chapter, you know, so... And the fourth guy is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Mock Vice, Match Vice, I don't really know how to pronounce it, I'll say, I'll say Mock Vice, uh, we, Mock Vice is the fourth guy, because Soul says, you know, they're sending four executive staff guys, they're probably all from Diamante's side, because Diamante is the only one of the, uh, elite executive staff, I don't remember their exact, the exact title. I know Virgo was elite executive staff, but I don't remember. I don't remember what their title was. But the top three guys: Diamante, Pika, Treble. He's the only one that has four. Four executive staff guys under him. The others have three. And we actually know. We actually learn how that pecking order works, like I mentioned. So ob obviously, Doflamingo's on top. Then we have Pika, Diamante, and Treble. And with, Diam and with Diamante, the executive staff that he has under him on Lao G, Senior Pink, Dellinger, and, Matt, and uh, Mach Vice. And they, they actually specialize in hand-to-hand -hand combat, apparently. So that's cool to know. Um, when it comes to Pika, the, the three people under him are Baby Five, Buffalo, and Gladius, and they specialize in special ops. And then when it comes to uh, Treble, the three 
people under him, the three women under him, are Sugar, Violet, and Jora. So, uh, and they have, they're the special abilities, uh, they're the special abilities people, so, yeah, uh, Virgo and Monet are up there too, Monet's elite staff, and Virgo, like I said, is, or executive staff, I mean, and Virgo is elite executive staff, but, um, Monet's kind of dead now, so, yeah, she's not exactly executive staff anymore, and Virgo is probably not dead, not gonna lie. All right, he's. I do not believe for a second that Virgo is dead. One, we didn't see the corpse. Two, the exact same thing that I said about uh, the about Law not being dead. When Oda kills people off, he likes to make a show of it. He likes to make have the death be an, have an impact. You know, Ace. We, who can forget that's the scene with Ace standing there and a kind of his hand going through him? Who can forget? Whitebeard standing there with his eyes closed, you know, who can forget Monet, well, that one's not as important, but who who can forget Monet after having her heart stabbed by Caesar Clown, just, you know, just laying there, and then you have something like Virgo, where even people like Pell, big deal was made about, uh, made about them, and they aren't even dead, you know, Pell, Igaram, you know, guys like that, Sabo, they are not, they're not even dead. So for someone like Law or Virgo to be dead without just being, you know, being treated as another occurrence in the manga, that's, there's no way. Okay, Virgo, we didn't even, he supposedly died because of the explosion, but we didn't see him, we didn't see his corpse, we didn't, we didn't see the explosion itself, really. We didn't, we didn't even see it. it was, all we saw was Law. Looking back and saying, huh, that explosion sounded like it came from the sad room or whatever, the SAD room. You know, that's all we saw. So I, there's no doubt in my mind that Virgo is alive, all right? But, um, yeah, I'm talking too long about someone who wasn't even really in the chapter. Um, at, at the end, after we get that information, Robin, Usopp, the toys, the doors, they arrive at the pier and they see uh, Doflamingo's guys forcing all these toys to work. And the one panel that they showed with with one of the Flamingo's guys ordering someone to run, and the guy looked like a human to me. But, you know, maybe he was like a toy soldier. Like one of the, now that no. The toy soldiers would probably all look like soul, like nutcrackers or something like that. But whatever. The the thing is the guy looked like a human, so and he was his size was human like as well, so there might be humans being forced to work down there as well. And the guy was actually like talking back too, like, "Oh, you got you're only acting like that because you have Joker behind you, you know." It's, but uh, yeah, so there might be humans being forced to work down there too. But uh, yeah, that's it for the chapter. Um, it was it was we got information, we got some development for the whole factory storyline, and that's it for the chapter. Um, I'll actually, I'll give this, I'll give this chapter an eight out of ten because it's it wasn't like development information. It was good, you know. We learned about the development information. It was good, you know. We learned about. I mean, we could we could have already assumed that Baby Five, Buffalo, Gladius, Loud G, Dellinger, um, Sugar, uh, Senor Pink. We could have assumed that all those guys were. In the executive staff, I think we learned that Wild is in the executive staff too. Jora, I don't remember if she was announced to be in the executive staff, but the point is that we could figure out like all these guys in the executive staff. So, it, in terms of information, it isn't in that part. I guess it's not ex actually as high, but still, I mean, I'll give it an eight out of ten anyway. Why not? Right. <laughs> Why not? It, but um, yeah, that's it for this chapter review. Um, I'm, I'm now I'm thinking about the executive staff. I'm not really sure if I agree with how they're being built up. 
because their being built up is like, you know, Doflamingo's on top, then you've got Diamante, Pika, and Treble. Then after them, these guys are the you know, the big guys on campus. They're the strongest after them. You know, so you, you would assume that these guys would be pretty strong too, but, I mean, judging from what we've seen of them so far, they aren't very impressive. I mean, what... Baby Five and Buffalo were together and they still couldn't beat Frankie. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's not very impressive. Sugar is probably only on the executive staff because of her ability to turn people into toys. Um, though, it, though to be fair, we don't know how ex how many ways she can go about turning people into toys. Like, is it does she have to look into their eyes? Does she shoot like a freaking beam at them? Like, what? Like, we don't we don't know how exactly she goes about turning people into toys. So it could be a powerful weapon. Um, Violet isn't even like. Again, the abilities, the ability, you know, all of Treble's guys, are just old girls, aren't very impressive in terms of fighting ability. It's just their abilities themselves are cool. <laughs> like, that's it. And when it comes to Pika's guys, you know, well, Baby Five's a girl, but, you know, Baby Five and Buffalo are impressive. They got their butts kicked by Frankie. Like, <laughs> it wasn't even a contest, really. Like, <laughs> like, there was never any doubt that Frankie would lose. Like, they, they were having trouble. <laughs> Ever, ever from the start, and Gladius, I wouldn't think that he was up stronger than those two, especially since those two are fighting together. I mean, it's from what we've seen so far, they're just not impressive. So I'm not really sure if I agree with how they're being built up, but whatever. It's like they're, they're just trying to make us think that they're impressive, but everything we've seen so far doesn't really say that. I mean, half th we've been introduced to pretty much M Mach Vice is the only one who we've not seen a decent amount of. I mean, we've seen him before, but we haven't really seen much of him. We saw we've seen Lao G on a couple different occasions. Uh, Senor Pink as well, especially with this chapter, Dellinger, the Bellamy stuff. Chura, obviously, Violet, obviously, AB5, Buffalo, obviously, Gladius, we've seen them, like, once. But, I mean, it's just, from what we've seen, they're just not that impressive. So I don't know why Otis trying to make us think that they are when he's been, he's telling us one thing and showing us the opposite. But whatever, I'm talking, I'm just, that's it, you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done, alright? Rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.